Thrilled to welcome back to the show Brad Friedman from bradblog.com. Hey, Brad, thanks for calling in. Uh, good to be here, Dave. Thanks. Hey, so uh, what kind of schedule are you working over there? I hear you're working like overnights L.A. time and things are just getting completely out of control. Uh, we're always working overnight. Things are always getting out of control. But, you know, that's that's the life of a troublemaker and a blogger and a muckraker and apparently a progressive journalist in this country. So I hope my producer uh, takes takes this guidance from you. I can't get him up before noon. So this is the work <laughs> ethic I wish he had. Um, I want to talk about the Chamber of Commerce story that you've gotten personally wrapped up in. With great interest, I read the entire story and the updates on your blog. Just let's start at the beginning. I mean, tell us what's going on here. Yeah, this is a pretty extraordinary uh, story. Uh, It it began about two weeks ago uh, when this security company by the name of H.B. Gary, this uh, so-called cybersecurity intelligence firm, uh, announced that they were going to go after Anonymous, who I know you have some experience with yourself, David. Right. And and uh, they were going. He said this uh, fellow, the CEO of HB Gary, his name is Aaron Barr, announced that he was going to expose some of the uh, members of Anonymous. And they said, "Well, no, you're not, because you have it wrong. You don't know who we are." And he said, "Yes, we do." And they said, "No, you don't. We'll prove it." And they basically went in. Uh, were able to hack this cybersecurity firm's uh, website. Mind you, this cybersecurity firm has government contracts and everything else in the war on terror. They were able to hack the website, uh, deface it, take over uh, Aaron Barr's Twitter account, remotely wipe out his iPad, take all of their emails off of the server and off of the backups, and they ended up posting about 70,000 of those emails. And the big story, I remember the big story I gathered from it was that there seemed to be some coordinated effort involving H.B. Gary and, and am I right in saying some government agencies in suppressing or attacking WikiLeaks? Well, yeah, what they were trying to do is, as we learned once these emails were posted, H.B. Uh, Gary was working with two other firms, one called Palantir Technologies, another called Barrico Technologies. Combined, they were calling themselves Team Themis, and they were working with a law firm, Hunton & Williams was the name, on behalf of Bank of America to go after WikiLeaks and to dis- try to discredit WikiLeaks and uh, journalists who were... Uh, uh, you know, supporting them, folks like Glenn Greenwald over at Salon. They were planning to plant fake documents. They, too, were working with the same law firm, Hunton and Williams, with the th- same three uh, security companies that called themselves Team Themis, to do an almost parallel scheme to go after the perceived enemies of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. And I found myself on that list uh, pretty much front and center uh, photographs of me, uh, pr- private details about not just me, but my family uh, was in this email as they were planning to target me. So let's, uh, let's and, stop there for a second. Yeah. When you say details, what kind of details? And is, do you have, are, are these details that would be easy or difficult to find out about you? Um, not necessarily part particularly difficult, I suppose, in this information age where you can find out just about anything on anybody. Yeah. But, you know, it, it wasn't just on me. And, you know, things, uh, you know, home address, birthdays, things like that. But it wasn't just me. It was members of my family who have no relation to the work that I do or to the organization uh, that I work with. I founded an organization some years ago, co- uh, co-founded an organization called Velvet Revolution U.S., and we had set up a campaign uh, a little more than a year ago called StopTheChamber.com. And the purpose of that campaign was to sort of expose the U.S. Chamber of Commerce for the, frankly, uh, mafia-like tactics that they were using uh, you know, for their advocacy in going against, uh, you know, people they disagreed with, in trying to uh, forward uh, the notion of uh, global warming denialism, and, you know, all sorts of right-wing causes. And when you they, say they discredit you, I mean, do you, do you believe that the source of this was just reporting that you've done recently, and that's how you got on their radar? Well, I think it stems from the uh, StopTheChamber.com campaign. I mean, we have been pretty effective and pretty loud 
in uh, you know putting out uh, the facts about what these guys are doing, what their CEO, what the CEO of the Chamber of Commerce, uh, Tom Donahue, what his background is like, and the dirty dealings, frankly, that he has been involved with for years, and basically trying to let people know the connection to the uh, to the Koch brothers. Uh, and all of that business, you know, and there was there was nothing covert about our campaign. We were pretty out front about, you know, trying to let folks know who this U.S. Chamber of Commerce really was and the type of tactics that they used. And do you, have reason, do you have reason to believe that it was going to go beyond just the propaganda discredit you thing into, I mean, you know, personal surveillance, people following you around, bullying, that type of thing? Oh, yeah. I, it, it, they were rather detailed about what they were planning to do. They were going to fake, uh, they were going to create fake personas in hopes of infiltrating, uh, the, uh, Chamber of, Com- uh, StopTheChamber.com and another group called U.S. Chamber Watch, which was set up by Change to Win, a union group. And they were going to try and, uh, uh, make it seem as if there was some grand conspiracy going on. They were talking about hacking the networks of the people involved, you know, the home networks of the people involved, planting ma- malware, all sorts of dirty tricks, frankly, highly illegal. Do you believe that they will have uh, legal charges brought against them? Well, I, like I say, because the DOJ themselves is compromised in this matter, having yeah. recommended Hunt and Williams, you know, I, I have not heard a word from the Department of Justice. I would be very surprised if they took any action, because, I mean, this scheme really highlights the fact that big government and big corporations are working together, have this pernicious nexus together, where you know they feel they have uh, impunity to do anything they want, no matter how illegal it is. Yeah, it's unbelievable. So that's why we're taking. It's incredible. That's why we're looking at action as far as uh, the bar complaint in D.C. and potentially uh, civil action, uh, unless the DOJ steps forward and actually you know does to these companies what David what they would have done to you or I had we been uh, putting together such a plot. No question about it. I want to follow up with you on this story in in a couple of weeks, but real quick, do you believe, I mean, do you fear for your physical safety at this point, or do you think that since it's been exposed, hopefully that will be limited? As far as, you know, fearing for my my safety, my family's safety, you know, I have long gone up against, you know, some pretty insidious and some pretty powerful folks. Hmm. So I'm used to watching my back, but I think that... uh, I think that it's incredibly disturbing to see that so much of what we've warned about, so much of what we've been concerned about for so many years, that these folks are trying these dirty tricks, is all documented right here. It's not a conspiracy theory. It's an actual conspiracy, and it's a damn disturbing disturbing one at that. I'll say. Brad Friedman from bradblog.com. Thanks so much, Brad, and we'll follow up with you.